back to the prison system. So the privatized prisons and the capitalist drug syndicate, how they work together. The drug war has become a major vehicle of militarization in Latin America. It's a vehicle funded and driven by the U.S. government and fueled by a combination of false morals, hypocrisy, and a lot of cold, hard fear. The so-called war on drugs is really a war on people, especially youth, women, indigenous peoples, and dissidents. The drug war has become the main way for the Pentagon to occupy and control countries at the expense of whole societies and many, many lives. Absolutely true. Um, America as a prison society. According to the Justice Department, 7 million people, or one out of every 32 adults, are either incarcerated on parole or probation or under some other form of state or local supervision. One out of every 100 Americans is now in prison. In 1970, Congress created the National Communication on Marijuana and Drug Abuse to carry out a study and then propose a new drug law, the Rockefeller Drug Laws. It official, the official report favored discouraging the use of marijuana, but recommended decriminalizing it. The recommendations were denounced in 1973 by President Nixon, who proclaimed a national war on drugs. Congress passed legislation giving the same severe jail time for the milder cannabis as for the sale of possession of cocaine and heroin. This remains the foundation of the current drug law. 37 million, or one out of every six Americans, regularly use emotion-controlling medical drugs. The drugs are mostly, uh, the users are mostly women. The pushers are doctors, and the suppliers are the pharmaceutical companies. The profits are stupendous. In the U.S., as of 2003, there were more than 125,000 alcohol-related deaths a year. 473,000 die prematurely from tobacco-related illnesses. 53,000 of these are non-smokers. While not a single one of the 31,450,000 marijuana users dies because of according to, according to the model uh, in the Lancet, excuse me, dies because of their use of this benign plant. And this is according to the prestigious medical journal, The Lancet. The smoking of cannabis, even long term, is not harmful to health. It would be reasonable to judge cannabis as less of a threat than alcohol or tobacco. Yes, but it is such a profit maker. And they put this disinformation out that, oh my God, it leads to higher drugs and it's real bad and it's, it's terrible and all of this other stuff. The focus of the drug war in the United States has shifted significantly over the past two decades from hard drugs to marijuana, which now accounts for nearly half of all drug arrests nationwide, according to an analysis of the federal crime statistics in 2005. A study of the FBI data by Washington-based think tank The Sentencing Project found that the proportion of heroin and cocaine cases plummeted from 55% of all drug arrests in 1992 to less than 30% 10 years later. During the same period, marijuana arrests rose from 28% of the total to 45%. Today in 15 states, for a nonviolent marijuana-related offense, you could be sentenced to life in prison without parole, while national average uh, sentence for murder is six to eight years. Enforcing marijuana prohibition costs taxpayers an estimated $10 billion a year annually and results in the arrest of more than 829,000 indiv individuals per year, far more than the total number of arrestees for all violent crimes combined, including murder, rape, robbery, and aggravated assault. So you see where I'm going here? Does that make any sense? Ten billion dollars to arrest 829,000 uh, Americans per year, or people per year, which is far more than the total number of all violent crime arrestees, including murder, rape, robbery, and aggravated assault. So you see, it's, it's money. It is all about this prison system that we're going to go deeply into the corporate prison system. Okay. Of those charged with marijuana violations, approximately 89%, uh, that's uh, 738,915 Americans, were charged with possession only. The remaining 90,710 90, uh, individuals were charged with sale or manufacturing a category that includes all cultivation offenses, even those where marijuana was being grown for personal or medical use. In past years, roughly 30% of those arrested were aged 19 or younger. More of our population is now behind bars for marijuana offenses than at any time in our history. The U.S. Sentencing Commission reports that only 5.5 of all federal crack cocaine defendants and 11% of all federal drug dependents are, defendants are high-level dealers. The rest are low-level operatives and those caught possessing. Of course, they don't want to kill the they don't want to kill the golden goose. They want to you know they want to they want to get suck the money out of the out of the 
the user, get him on it, prosecute him, arrest him, put him through the system so he gets three hots to trot in the private prison system that's, that the state gets money from the federal government. Oh, it's beautiful. It's good. This is what they do. This is how they're starting to do it. So anyway, let's talk about those private prison profits. Revenues in the private prison uh, corporations passed the one billion mark in 1998. That's pretty big. And now it's closing in on two billion. Two companies dominate the privatized incarceration industry. That's uh, the Corrections Corporation of America, the CCA, and the GEO Group, which was formerly known as the Wackenhut Corrections uh, Corporation. These two companies control 75% of the profit incarceration market and make huge donations to uh, Cabal Lockies. Private uh, prison companies remain profitable by supporting political... Uh, 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 by, excuse me. Private prison companies remain profitable by supporting private accomplices to support strict sense, stricter sentencing laws and strict uh, tough-on-crime legislation. To maintain profits, corporate-owned persons need a steady flow of inmates. Now, this leads to a lot of tyranny, and this is tyranny that's on record, and it's, getting, it's growing every day. Um, in, in Pennsylvania, there's a judge. I have the article. I'm jumping ahead here, but I think it, it makes for a good point. Uh, where a judge was guilty of taking bribes from a private prison, sending juveniles to a for-profit lockup. Two senior Pennsylvania judges have been sentenced to seven years in prison for taking bribes from juvenile detention centers. In exchange for the bribes, the judge turned in guilty verdicts for the teens who appeared before them and sent them to juvie, thus uh, en enriching the operators of their little, uh, their little gulag there. For this, the judges received $2.6 million in kickbacks. Mark, Chiav Mark Chiavarella was convicted of racketeering in a case that accused him of sending young offenders to uh, these prisons, detention centers, for a million dollars in illicit payments from the builder and owner. Prosecutors convicted former Lucerne County judge uh, who used uh, children as pawns, locking them up unjustly in a plot to get rich. It's unbelievable. He's found guilty on 12 out of 39 charges on Friday, including, this is from uh, 2011, uh, yeah, this is from uh, 2010, I mean, including racketeering, money laundering, and conspiracy in connection with the nearly $1 million payment from Robert Merrickley, the developer of PA Child Care Center. He plans to appeal. Chiavello was acquitted on charges of bribery and extortion, blah, blah, blah. But no trials, uh, charges have been filed against the private prisons that paid the bribes. What a shock. So we've got even higher level corruption in, judi in the judicial system going from that. It's unbelievable. Um, now, they need this steady flow of income, of prisoners, to have their steady flow of income from our tax dollars that we're paying. And as you see, most of the people in prisons shouldn't even be there. Or they don't need to be there. And... It's it's a it's a it's a fraud to say that it's going to make society uh, more dangerous because the da it, clearly the most dangerous people are in jail and if you take away the ones that aren't you can close hundreds of prisons and save millions and millions of dollars maybe billion but no we can't do that because we have to continue this this assault till everybody. Is and ends up on a prison in the prison system, and the whole planet is a prison, which is really their goal, and working for it, and they're getting pretty close. Now, at the at the start of 2008, the American penal system held more than 2.3 million adults. China, with four times the population in the in the, of the United States, was second with 1.5 million, behind Russia, who was a distant third with 890,000 inmates. According to the latest available figures, beyond the sheer number of inmates, America also is the global leader in the rate at which it incarcerates its citizenry, outpacing nations like South Africa and Iran. Nice. Iran's our enemy, but look what's happening at home. You see, this is how they work. They pump up the, the patriotism, and this is the greatest country in the world, and, uh, you know, I think it's patriotic to pay my income taxes, and they say, you know, this is the... Uh, the, 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 the shining light, the beacon of freedom and prosperity. Come here and we will steal from you. Come here and we will tax you. Come here and we will incarcerate you. Come here and we will take anything we can to enslave you. To change laws 
to favor corporations, to destroy the individual in favor of the collective. That is the essence of tyranny and the essence of collectivism. Anyway, so in Germany, 93 people are in prison for every 100,000 adults. In the U.S., the rate is roughly eight times that, or 750 per 100,000. Now I know you're going to say, that's because of the, uh, the, the blacks and the Puerto Ricans and, the, and all this, because they're the ones that are in jail. And all that. Yeah, you see, the globalists are really good. Remember, the CIA created the drug problem. They really did, and they continue to keep it going. They created the business of it. Who do you think gave Ken Kesey the acid to go around in the 60s, turning everybody on in all the colleges, and turning people on to weed, and everything else. Who did that? Whose experiment was that, the electric Kool-Aid acid, acid test? It was the CIA, MK Ultra, and all of these other com combined programs through this really shadow government, secret government, like uh, Bill Moyers, a great uh, thing you can see on YouTube, all about, uh, from 1987, Bill Moyers did a tremendous uh, expose on, the, on you know, the Iran Contra and the CIA drug dealing. Then you can look at Mena, Arkansas, with Bill Clinton uh, when he was uh, governor. They brought so much cocaine through there. Boy, Bill was snorting it like left and right. Boy, let me tell you something. It's on record. All those women that he groped and everything, he did it. It's all true. It's all true. And I voted for him. That's why everyone, again, listen to this. you got to understand, I was deceived my whole life. I woke up, started doing my research, which is what everybody should do. And you start to learn the truth. And then all you can do is seek truth because you, you realize, man, I'm angry because everybody, the, everything that I've been taught and told and, and people that I supported lied to me. And I'm just tired of it. I'm sick of people lying and, 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 and bowing down to, this, to, this, to, the, to the masters. I mean, let's admit that at least we are slaves but we're, we're having a rebellion against this. Now, today in, in Hartford, Occupy Hartford rally is at 5 o'clock today. Okay, there's going to be a lot of people going down there to Bushnell Park, and it's going to be a big rally. Tomorrow, we are change are having a rally at the same spot, 10 a.m., and I'll be putting a lot of f postings on wearechange.org. You can go to wearechangeconnecticut.org. You can also go, of course, to uh, Freedom First Films on YouTube to watch anything here. But the best spot is to go to the, to the website, wearechangect.org. Okay. Um, now, starting uh, with all of this, as I was mentioning, uh, Obama and the uh, cabal puppets pushed for the increased illegal immigration invasion of the U.S. and uh, repressive laws such as states in Arizona, Utah, Florida, Ohio... Tennessee, Iowa, and Georgia result in immigrants landing in privatized prisons. It's a beautiful program. That's why we don't have... It's not, it's not because they're bad. They bring them in here, okay, they, and the argument... It's, it's insidious. They're, such, they're so clever in their deception. They're going to get... Everybody in America is going to be angry, and I was, I'm angry too. I mean, I'm not, I'm not blind to what it really means, but I'm angry that they come here and they don't pay taxes and all this other stuff. I don't want to pay the taxes they want us to pay because most of them are fraudulent. I mean, it's ridiculous. We're overtaxed. It's, it's, it's beyond comprehension. They use taxes and money to dollar devaluation. It's not inflation. It's dollar devaluation to further enslave us so that we won't be able to buy the properties and be owners. It's going to come to that point. And uh, unless we all wake up and really, really say, no, 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 and let these guys take the haircut. And if anyone should get a bailout, it should be the American people. We are the ones that need the bailout. Give me $53,000 instead of, you know, uh, a trillion dollars to, uh, to trillions and trillions of dollars to, uh, to all of these criminal bankers these, these, that stole the money, created the fraud through Glass-Steagall being, being repealed. And, the, and, and Clinton, Clinton laughing with Larry Summers, and, he, and he's such a genius, and they're laughing all the way while everybody's deceived, and the global, Clinton's global initiative, and all of this madness, and then Bush continued the, 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 the agenda, the, the, the New World Order agenda, just like his father, and just, and just like Obama's continuing it, it's the same agenda.